I have a question. Does anybody else use a cup of coffee to hold their phone up when they do YouTube? Well, that's what I'm doing right now. Got to be fancy here. Uh, best top-notch equipment. Anywho, I just got done watching some YouTube. That's what I usually wind up doing in my spare time, which I have quite a bit of lately. And it's amazing what you come across on YouTube. You have a few guys on there that really know some good stuff, have a lot of uh, information, and have very good channels. And then you have guys that have channels that have a big following, and they talk a good game, and they teach you stuff that's their opinion, and um, some of it's very bad habits, and it's misinformation. Such as a video I just saw, somebody teaching you fellas how to speed shift the car and launch it. And the fellas use on the Jeep to show you that. And the funniest part about this is this. The guy that I just saw doing this video, he had a car that he was bragging up about two years ago that he was going to show you guys how to go fast with a four speed on nitrous. And uh, I told my better half here, I said, you know, when it comes time for that car to hit the track, he's going to have an automatic in that car and make up every excuse in the book why it's not going to have a stick in it when he runs it. I'll tell you why the stick wasn't in it when he put the nitrous on it. It's because he don't know how to drive a stick. And he just proved it because he was showing everybody how to run a car with a stick shift. Everything he said on that video, all but maybe this much, was wrong. From the burnout, to launching it, to shifting it. Speed shift, power shift. It's always been speed shifting in my book. I, I, I don't know why that power shift came along, I guess, in the later years. And people call it power shifting. I call it ramming through the gears. Now, back in my day, my handle on the CB was called Gear Jammer. And I had people actually gave me that name. And it really wasn't because the gears jammed up on me so often. It's because I was jamming that thing in the gear. Them guys are saying, I don't know how you shift that car like that. Well, it's because I had different techniques of doing that. And it depended on the vehicle. Sometimes I'd actually just hold on the shifter and, and use my fingers with the shifter and click it back like this here and just hold back and do it this way. Other times I would use the palm of my hand and do it this way. It depended on the shifter. I found out that I could flick the shifter faster with my wrist, my hand like that, shifting the vehicle and then this way then moving your arm like this try that sometime just take your shifter hand and slap it with your wrist and snap it in this way like a martial arts hit that's a good way to explain it instead of your arm this way like this fellow on YouTube was showing you you use your wrist. That's my technique. See how it works out for you. So, anyway. He was showing people how to start side step the clutch. And do a burnout. Well, number one. If you have anything making any power. And you have gear in the car. Most guys heat their tires up in second gear. They don't use first gear. And 
he was showing you how to step the clutch Let's just bring your foot off the clutch pedal and hit the gas to the floor and then you jump on the brake pedal so what happens when you do that you have a car that's trying to launch no matter how quick you do this and then you're slamming the brakes on so you have an, a car trying to do this has the initial hit of the shock and now you're hitting the brakes like this that's real good on the input shaft and it all depends how a car is set up with the clutch, number one, how this all comes into play. But just the idea that he would tell somebody that's how you do that. And some guys can do it that way. Some guys do this this way. I'm going to give you my side of how I do it and how I used to do it. I like to preload the clutch a little bit on certain vehicles, depending if it has a street tire on it and it needs a little cushion, you engage the clutch a little bit and you hold the brake. If you, This is not with a line lock. I never had a line lock in my life. So I would hold the brake and you pump the brakes up first so it has tendency to make the front brakes pump up. You don't want to have it where you feel the back brakes locking in. Because when you're doing that, like this fellow said, and you're just coming off that clutch, sidestepping it, and then getting on the brake you're making the back brakes pump up too. So you're actually dragging the motor down trying to do that. Oh, and here's another thing. He said you bring it up to 3,000 RPMs. 3,000 RPMs is actually going to be harder on parts than bringing it up to 5,000 RPMs. And this all depends if you have a stock engine, what your power band is, and, and things like that. And if you're just trying to bring the car out easy. So this is for somebody just brute, flat out racing something and doing their burnout and just tearing a quarter mile up. The same about some guy that's going out there trying to have a little fun. He's just going to go easy. So that's how you'll save parts. If you just want to go out there and have a little bit of fun and not break parts, then you can do it that way. But the best way to do it is to get the RPM up high enough where the shock is going to be over top enough to not dog it down. So when you disengage the clutch, it's going to spin the tires right away. Not have tendency to bog down, especially if you have slicks on the vehicle. Number one, if you have street tires on something, a regular street tire, if you're burning them things in, most of the time, that's a mistake. You just want to clean them things off. You don't need to roast tires. And on a street vehicle with stock tires, a lot of times you're better off up in the air pressure, not letting it out. It's all stuff you got to experiment with because it depends on your shock setting, how heavy the vehicle is. Like one car might want the tires 40 pounds. Another car might want 25 pounds in the air pressure. You have to experiment with all this stuff yourself. There's no set rule coming from me or any other guy on YouTube that's going to benefit your vehicle. You have to try things for yourself. And that's why I get on here and kind of give you guys the other side of the coin. Because this guy has a big following and people think he's some big drag racer. And the guy, to be honest with you, he had cars back in the day that he was in a magazine at one time. And here's the thing. We've gone a half a second faster with the same car that he has. And he was in the magazines. But we weren't in the magazines. So who would you listen to? Somebody that's in a magazine telling you what to do? Or somebody that you've never heard of before? You'd listen to him. He'd be the guy at the track. You see him in the, the write-ups every week and in the uh, books here. And uh, wow, he just went a tenth faster. Oh, he figured out how to shift this car. Uh, he just went another tenth faster. When meanwhile, we taught our friend how to drive, and he taught his friend. He was only a tenth off that car that he was driving when 
basic LS LX Mustang with no options and my friend's friend's car was a full weight GT with everything in it everything the heavy seats the car weighed about probably 500 pounds more than that car did and he was only a tough difference at that time of how fast he was going and this guy's supposed to be a professional driver people getting that impression but uh the thing is you have to be careful who you listen to on youtube if these guys don't have something to back up what they say if they're just sitting in a jeep showing you how to bust the gear and then doing a burnout what's that telling you especially when they've made a comment two years ago that a stick car and nitrous don't mix well i can actually say to anybody watching this I can show you different and you can compare what I'm telling you to if you know the fellow I'm talking about here you can compare what I'm telling you to what he's telling you and you watch the difference in the cars how they run just put in the green gangster and you'll see what I'm talking about Grover boys racing with the green gangster and you'll get to see what getting a car in the gear and getting it to leave sounds like and looks like and uh how you set the clutch is a big factor in all this you can actually set up a clutch to actually kind of not slip but it will cushion the the first initial hit and the car actually be faster like that than it would be if you have it real aggressive. And that also uh, goes against some of these people that put a real aggressive clutch, like a Ram clutch in their vehicle, and it's a stock engine. You're actually hurting that by doing that. If you use a stock replacement clutch from like Advance or one of these places like that, Mr. Auto or any of these regular auto places that you could buy your parts from that's probably your best bet one of the companies we dealt with back in the day was a stock replacement clutch but I looked on the box and it was made by zoom but it was just a standard street clutch it wasn't heavy duty or anything that's what we used to go 10 seconds with back in the day and like I said, my son had the firewall adjustment where he adjusted it himself. And in case somebody doesn't know this, if you put a firewall adjuster for your clutch on a, on a Fox body, you have to make sure you unhook the, the stock quadrant in there that adjusts the clutch up because then you can't adjust it. It will, it will fight you. You have to take remove the old quadrant. When you go to a firewall adjustment, so I thought I'd throw that in there. In there, I've seen, I've seen people run into trouble with that before, not knowing that. Some guys don't know. You you live and learn, and you know they'll be embarrassed when that happens to them. Like why didn't they supposed to take the stock one out? I just thought you put the adjustable one in there, and you could leave the stock quadrant in there. No, you can't. So, I hope that helps somebody with that. But anyway. I don't like trying to kind of go against what somebody else is telling you, but I can give you the other side of the coin. And that's what I'm doing. And if you like to drive your vehicle that way, and you say, well, Terry, that's how I do it. I just sidestep it and let it fly. That's up to you. I'm just telling you how we do it. I didn't know exactly how my son ran the car. I'd actually ask him, and I found out that he did it the same way that I did it back in the day. I wasn't sure, because I'm not in the car with him when he's out there testing and stuff. I know he has his theories on stuff, 
we have a little bit different uh, view on some of them things like that. But uh, I'll tell you what. He's done pretty well, so I'm not going to argue with my son, thinking I'm the dad, and I know more, I'll tell you that. Because uh, <laughs> he might show me a trick or two, <laughs> especially with my old legs, my knees. I can't, <laughs> I can't bust them like I used to. Uh, my my uh, stick shift days may be uh, coming to an end, and I hate to say that because... That's racing to me, banging the old gears. So anyway, I thought I'd do this little video, put my own two cents in on that. And uh, I have a lot to say sometimes, but it's, it's kind of, it, it would be almost derogatory in a way. And I don't want it to be where I'm going against somebody and making it where it sounds like I'm putting them down. But uh, they put it out there sometimes, and nobody says anything back to kind of override what they say. So somebody watching YouTube is going to say, well, that guy showed how to drive that stick. You're going to go out there and listen to that fella, and you're going to break your studs off on a GM, most likely, if you have like an old Chevelle or something, like 69. You're going to break an axle. You're going to... Uh, probably break your input shaft and on a stock transmission on a T5 if you're inexperienced you're going to bend the fork in the trans or you're going to break a synchronizer or you're just going to grenade the whole thing when you shift it in the third trying to slam it in a certain way if you don't know any of this if you just listen to somebody telling you to go out there and uh do what he's telling you to do without knowing little tricks, how to work the clutch and things like that. And just listen to somebody telling you to go crazy like that. Somebody can shift the car correctly. Doesn't usually break parts often. If you have a guy annihilating transmissions and the trans is a half decent trans and they're breaking that car and they have decent parts, then they're doing something wrong. Now, don't get me wrong, you can break anything with a stick. You can blow a clutch, things like that happen. It all depends how it's set up. Like I said, you can have it too aggressive, and then you're going to have a clutch blow out of it. You blow the springs right out of the clutch sometimes. You have to know what you're doing with stuff. So it's never one-sided, it's never one way. But I guarantee you this, the way he's telling you to do it, it's hard on everything. The initial hit, then the, then the hit on the brakes, and your suspension's initially hitting this way, and now you're hitting the brakes and making that suspension sit there and spin the tires when you're doing your burnout. Where if you just crisscross your foot on the brake pedal and the ex accelerator and hold down on it and bring it up, it's a little tricky, but you'll get used to it. You want to make sure your foot don't get stuck in there somehow or wedged trying to do this stuff. Because depending on how close your pedals are, that could happen. So I don't want to see anybody go out there listen to me and then have their foot get stuck between the brake pedal. And you're trying something in your driveway. Now you ran through your garage trying to make sure you're in a clear place when you do this. Don't sit there in the driveway with your car facing your garage or have another car in front of you and you're trying to practice. Have a clear area when you when you do this kind of stuff. Be safe. So I thought I'd throw that in there. I, I hope this don't have you more confused than before you started watching this. If you have any questions, my son and I will answer the best we can. And like I said, it's not cut dry to the point all the time you might have a certain way you already run your car you might be fine this is for guys that are being taught bad habits and I gotta say this fellow I'm talking about teaches a lot of bad habits I, I have to say that it's just my opinion and uh, maybe I have some bad habits of my own but I tell you what I don't want to show anybody 
something that's going to hurt them or break their vehicle. When you race, you always take a chance, but I want to try to show people things and tell people things that help them, not hinder them, especially when it's some off-the-wall stuff. The guy, the guy's never been no faster that I know of than 12s on an actually aspirated motor, and that's giving them a credit. He said he went 12s with a Roadrunner back in the day. He should, a big block Roadrunner should, should do that, so I'll just take that as it is. I know all the cars I see lately that he has is is not impressing me any. Matter of fact, I offered to run him, and he got very offended. He made a video about it, and <laughs> some guy, a random YouTube guy, called me out. I'm, I'm not gonna race. Yeah, I know you're not gonna race <laughs> because you looked the car up and you seen <laughs> what you what when I said 302. You probably thought about it, and then when you seen the car going down the track, you knew. <laughs> That's what happened to that. Because you don't have any problem racing other guys. And, no, oh, this is what grudge racing is, and I'm not showing the numbers on the car anymore. And that's all you've seen of that anymore, too, with that one. So, But anyway, guys, that's my little sarcasm when it comes to all this stuff. You have real racers out there, and you have guys that talk. And... I get a little annoyed when guys just put their opinion uh, put their opinion out there and they just talk. And then you see their cars run, they're not even that fast. I see a lot of cars on YouTube, 400 cubic inch, they run 11 seconds. And I'm like, what are these guys doing wrong? And they're mostly guys that say things derogatory about Fords. And uh, it, uh, that's another video. If you guys want me to uh, say a little bit about that one, I can. But uh, yeah, just to combat something that people said about the old Ford product. I've had more GM cars in my life than I have Fords. And I had quite a few more cars. I didn't realize I had so many of them. I counted them up the other day. Around eight eight or nine um, but I'll tell you why I run what I run and it has to do with a budget and being very dependable that's why you see the 302s on our form can't beat them not for what they are and people can think they can but uh, I've never seen anybody get away with what we get away with with any engine I've had them all. I've had all the GM, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, Buicks, uh, small block Mopars, big block Mopars, and the big block Fords, small block Fords. I can tell you what motors will handle a little bit of abuse and ones that won't take it at all. Everybody has their opinion about that, but uh, you have to go with what's good to you, though. Some guys can have a different brand and if it's good to you it's good to you and that's all I got to say about that so if you have good luck with a certain brand then uh, that's what you run some guys will stick up for a certain brand and dump money in every week and, and say you can't beat them oh that's what you have in life you're gonna have guys with different opinions and you'll have some people willing to uh, put 10 grand into something and run 1350s you know, another guy would say, I would never do that. That's what makes the world tick. So anyway, guys, thanks for stopping in. Listen to my little scenario on this whole thing. And uh, you can leave me your little opinion on all this if you want to. And uh, with that, I want to say God bless you. And I'll talk to you later.